Okay, so the first thing I want you guys to do is to open up the cup in Photoshop and let's duplicate it out by hitting our Command J on the keyboard or dragging it down to the new layer. We can rename it cup and let's put a solid color between the background and the cup layer so that we can cut it out. Pick green like we always do and grab your pen tool. Okay, we are going to trace out the entire outside of the cup. Okay, and do not forget when you want to go from a curved line to a straight line or from a curved line to another curved line, just hold the option on your keyboard and click back onto that point as well. As you work our way through it, you will see that I got to a spot right here where it didn't quite line up. Hold the option button and you can move each handle individually. So let's keep tracing it out all the way back to the original point and make it a complete path. To turn it into a selection, we can go over to our path panel. We go down to the third one from the left at the bottom of our path panel, load path as a selection, and let's apply a layer mask to our cup. Okay, so now let's go make a new blank document and let's just keep it simple as six by six inch let's rename it your last name and then just put cup mock-up keep it at 300 resolution and rgb color mode and that should be fine for right now just hit create at the bottom right and let's go bring in our cup layer with our layer mask to our new blank document move tool let's click and drag it and let's resize it go to the corner and hold the option button so that it's fairly larger and it fits in there better. Let's go ahead and put a solid color in, pick a random color, it doesn't matter right now, and let's have it at the very top. We are going to flip the right layer mask thumbnail with either our command I or we can go up to the edit drop down at the top left and do fill. Make sure the contents are black, not white like I just did, make sure it's black, not white, press OK. And let's bring our selection from our cup back by holding our command on the keyboard and clicking on the cup right layer th thumbnail. And let's go and grab our magnetic lasso tool. Third tool from the top on our toolbar, the magnetic lasso tool, make sure it's at new selection just to keep it simple for, uh, for right now. And what we can do is if you zoom in and you hold the option button down on the keyboard, you can just click once and drag the whole cursor around underneath the bottom of the lid and up and around the bottom of the cup. Once you have it back to the original point, it's going to take it off. Now, you can go and hit Q to hop into your quick mask mode. Make sure that you have a very hard paintbrush and it's all the way up to 100 on the opacity and you can paint with black to help fill it back in and if you want to flip it to the white you can hit x on the keyboard to flip between black and white make sure it looks nice and clean and then hit q to hop out go to that solid color press on the right thumbnail and then fill it with white so that we can fill in our selection with white which is gonna be the lid. Now deselect it by either hitting your command D on the keyboard or going to the select dropdown and going to deselect. We need to make this fit onto the lid better. So make sure it is set to linear burn and you can take the fill because it is the color down to either 75 or 80 is going to be fine, okay? And it's just to help it look more natural with the lid. Now we can put it into a group or a folder and drag the right layer mask onto the folder itself so that whatever is put into that folder is going to be self-contained into that layer mask. Rename them. Both the folder, call that lid color, and the solid color, call that just color. Okay, now let's make a brand new blank layer and call that artwork, right click on it and convert it to a smart object so that we can put all of our artwork into it. Now double click on the left thumbnail and let's go and put a solid color for the background color. 
we will be renaming this stuff here soon. If you are able to open up the patterns that came with it, and what we can do is we can go and change up the color very quickly. And if you notice, if you go to the properties panel, on the right hand side, you should see recolor. If you zoom in the edit button at the top, go in there and you can change up each of the colors how you want them to be. But if you want to change it all at once, click link harmony colors and then you can change it up to fit that need. This slider right there is going to change it to be lighter or darker. So press OK once you have the colors that you like. I'm going to go down to the bottom and, and go and copy the leaves because that's the one I like. So just copy it, command C and then command V to paste. Make sure it says smart object so that we can come back and change it. Now hold the option button and resize it to fit the entire page. Make it permanent by hitting return on the keyboard or the check mark at the top of your screen. Now we can go and change up the solid color, which is our background color. Okay, just go with what looks best for you. Now we can go to the bottom left of our toolbar and grab our rectangle tool. This is going to be our coffee sleeve, so we can go and change the color. And because I already picked that color for the background, it has saved it there. So pick one that you think looks best here. Keep it simple. Keep the color scheme very straightforward and just rename these layers just to best help you out. Okay. Now you can add some text in there by grabbing your type tool on the left hand side of your toolbar. And I'm just going to put in leafy green coffee just because that's what I think fits this. Now you can put in whatever that you want to. It does not matter. I'm just going to make a duplicate of that text layer by actually dragging it down to the new layer button at the bottom of your layers or you just hit your command J and just make it look good. Um, I'm just going to kind of mess around with this and just play with how it looks and I'm going to add in just a bit more text. I'm going to type in green and I'm going to shrink that down with my free transform holding the option and going to the corner makes it shrink down in the same placement of the center point so you can quickly put in just a bunch of text in here change up the color and the size to fit your needs so just put in what you think looks best and we will go from there okay Now I'm just going to grab all four of those layers while holding my shift. I would click on the top one and then click on the bottom one while holding shift to grab them all. So I can move them and I want you to put them into a folder by hitting your command G or just dragging it down to the new folder button at the bottom of your layers just so that we can have it in a nice place. Now make sure that you hit file save, not save as, but file save. Go back to your previous document with the cup and then resize it down. This is going to have to fit to the cup. So resize it and then let's change it to be linear burn and we can set the fill to be around 75 or 280. It just depends on how yours looks. We need to do our free transform, right click and then do warp. The goal here is to have it fit nicely to our cup and it needs to look realistic. So take your time on this part and make it look realistic to the point where the curvature of the text and the sleeve is going to fit the cup. Now make sure that the artwork sticks outside of the cup so that we can have a nice clean cut. Now I want you to bring your cup selection back by holding your command and clicking on the cup right layer thumbnail. And now this is important to hold the command and the option and then click on the lid color thumbnail to get rid of the lid and add a layer mask to your artwork layer so that it's going to hide all of the excess and it looks like it's a nice clean cut. Now press on the background layer and add in a solid color so that we can put in a nice background which we can change. This whole idea is we are in complete control of every single part and piece of this document. So rename it background color and you can just get rid of the right layer 
mask thumbnail of that if you want to. You can get rid of the background from the original if you want to as well. It just depends on what you want to do here. Okay. Now let's go to the artwork layer and let's right click on the little eyeball there and let's change it to, to be red because that's the most important layer here. And we can drag it down to the new folder. Same concept, let's drag the right layer thumbnail onto the actual folder itself so that whatever is put into that folder is gonna be self-contained inside of that layer mask. So we can go ahead and change up the lid color by going into that solid color and just pick the color that looks the best here. Now we need to put in some shadows, suppress so on the background color and add in three new blank layers. And of course call it contact shadow as the top layer, mid shadow as the middle layer, and then long shadow as the bottom layer. So start off with the contact, grab your paintbrush, make sure it's completely hard and the opacity is up to 100. Resize it and make sure that it is completely black. So go down and make sure it's the default black. Click once and we can go and grab our move tool, resize it, we can squish it, we can do whatever that we need to. So just do it for each layer. And one thing is do not convert it to a smart object if it's not being shown or it's just, it's going to be gone. So make sure that they are being shown before you convert them into a smart object because that is very important at this point. So you can go in and squish it while holding shift and then you can right click on it and then do warp and make it look how you think looks best here. Now this part takes quite a bit of time to get used to it so don't feel bad if it takes you a couple of tries. It took me several times to get it just right. So just keep on working at it and do it for each layer. It's the same exact process. I want you to just think about how the light is going to hit it because the light is coming directly at the cup because we have a highlight on the lid at the very center of it. And the mid shadow I think is going to be best if you kind of have the light creating shadows that kind of point upwards. And for right now just mess with it and it should be fine we will be applying some of the blur to it here soon but for right now just keep on working at making it look natural smooth and realistic And for the long, it's going to be a lot more of a softer shadow. It's not so defined. So you can make this big and soft, that is fine. Now then, we are going to go back to our contact shadow. We are going to go to the filter drop down blur and then the Gaussian blur. Now for this one, start off very small, around like two to three is gonna be fine. Okay, and then for the mid shadow, we are gonna do the same process. And this one, we can bump that way on up to around, I don't know, about 60 to 70, that's fine. And for the long shadow, this one is a little bit tougher, but it's the same process. We can bump that up to around 90 to 100. And now the fun part comes because we need to apply a layer mask to all three of our shadows. So we can take the opacity down just a bit because it shouldn't be so intense, but the real key here is to apply your layer mask, grab your paintbrush, make sure it's completely soft and it is large so that we can take out a very small chunk of it and we can control where we take it out. Now take the opacity at the very top of your screen down because that's going to be for the brush itself. I put mine around 40 just to have it soft and this part is just going to take just a little bit of practice and timing. So if you notice when you go to resize it because it is a smart object with the blur to it, 
is not going to like that so it's going to tell you that it's going to have to shut it off for a bit until it has been put back to the way it was so just hit the OK button and just work with it that way so slowly take it out or put it back in depending on how you want to do it don't forget black takes it out and white puts it back in so this part is going to take the longest so just take your time and then try and focus on realistic and really defined shadows so that it looks natural Okay, so let's go and grab all three of those shadow layers and let's put it into a group. Let's just rename it shadows so that they're all going to be in one place. Now let's go make a duplicate of our cup layer and let's just rename it cup highlight. We're going to make more of a highlight in the center of the cup to really push that light source. Drag it up to the very top and let's change the blending mode for this layer to be linear dodge and let's take the opacity way down to around 20. It's going to be bright. And let's go and adjust the levels for this. Taking the black slider to the right is going to really fine tune that highlight. But the problem with this is that it is destructive. So let's go back. Let's do our Command Z. And let's convert that layer, the cup highlight, into a smart object. So that when we do it this time, the same process with our levels we can do it non-destructively so let's take that black slider to the right so we have a more defined highlight in the center of that cup press ok and what we can do is we can take the opacity down just a bit because it is a little bit too intense still but it looks nicer now it it kind of puts a shine to it now we can save it Make sure that you save it into that folder that you took it from, and it is a PSD file. Now, let's say that you want to put in a different kind of background. So I'm just going to bring in this table background that I had created. Uh, I'm going to resize it, and the problem is, is the shadows don't really match up. So I'm going to take off the mid and the long so that it looks a little bit more natural. I'm going to add in a curves adjustment on top of the table, and I'm going to grab the hand icon and drag the texture, the darker texture, down just a bit. And I'm going to add in a brightness and contrast and I'm going to adjust it that way so that it looks a little bit more well defined. So I'm going to rename the table. I'm just going to call it wooden table. I'm going to grab all three layers and put it into a folder so that it's going to be like an optional background. And I'm going to put a color lookup at the very top. And I just went with one that I thought looked pretty good. I tried out a couple of them, but nothing special popped out until I got to around the crisp warm it was too intense so I took the opacity down just a bit but it brought the whole picture together which is really nice now you can do whatever that you want to at this point but right now this is it for me and i hope this helped you guys out and there's going to be more videos like this to come so let me know if you guys have any questions but save it out and that's it